Welcome to Shabbat with a Shmir here at Barney Greengrass in the heart of the Upper West Side. I'm Meredith Berkman, AKA Shabbat Mom, and I am here with Rabbi Adam Mintz to talk Torah. Hello, Rabbi Mintz. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So this week is the Parsha of Nusso, and among the topics is the Sota woman, the woman who is um, suspected of committing adultery. Mm -hmm. The husband takes her to the priest, and the priest gives her to drink from these bitter waters. And if she's guilty, then her stomach, her belly sags, and she's punished. Whether it explodes, it's not entirely clear, but she's punished. What do you make of that story? So, first of all, I have always wondered um, how this actually worked. So, first of all, the sagging belly are we it almost seems like sorcery or salem witch trial-esque i'm sure that's where that came from the witch trials but when they talk about drinking the waters of bitterness are we meant to believe that there was something put in the water that would make the woman's belly sag or are we meant to believe that each time one of these women who was suspected of adultery, or as my, my mother of blessed memory might have said in Yiddish, who was suspected of yizhing around, was brought before the, the Kohanim, that if she were guilty, suddenly, miraculously, her belly would sag? I don't really understand. It seems um, so magical. Magic is the right word. I would just say two things. The way the Torah describes it, What's special about the water is, is they used to erase the, the name of God from a Torah scroll, and that was in the water. The minute that you have the erased name of God, so magic, Jewish religious magic, you know, kind of is, rises to a new level. But there's an amazing debate among scholars today. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a Soto woman? I mean, did this ever actually happen? Oh, you and, mean, you know, it was that's, meant to be a warning? It's hard to know. It means the Torah describes it as if it really happened. But we don't really know whether it ever happened. Maybe the whole thing was just to scare women away from yizhing around. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no corresponding story where a man is punished, right? Yeah, I mean, that's technically that's because men are allowed to have multiple wives in the Torah. Polygamy is allowed. But probably it's because the men are the ones who wrote the law. Right, and the, men's, the men are the ones who wrote the laws and yet felt the need to control the women. Let's move on. Um, can't help. That's why, you know, I always tell my son says he lives with a controlling mother, three controlling sisters. It's like Portnoy's complaint writ large. But anyway, on that note, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.